Rub up your engines! Case to Sozzy says, Scotty, what do you think? Car prices will fall down in 2024. Uh, last month, car prices went up like uh, 16%. They were selling the average car for like almost $3,000 more than the manufacturer suggested retail price, the MSRP. And some cars like Genesis were going for $12,000 over what their manufacturer suggested list price was for the luxury cars, generally go for even more. So I don't know, the car manufacturers would be kind of sleazy. Look at GM, oh, we are, we're not gonna make pickup trucks for a while now, we'll stop making them in this factory because we, we don't wanna have too many of them. Yeah, they don't wanna make it look like they have too many of them because then they can say, well, we only have a limited amount, here's what you're gonna pay or you're not gonna get it, right? My advice, don't buy anything until the price has gone down, show them something. They're companies, they make products. You don't buy them, they're screwed. They'll have fields full of them they can't sell. So don't take their extra price, just don't buy them. Hold off. And then they'll be crapping in their pants and they'll have to lower their prices. Jason, so Scott, you say used German cars are unreliable. What about brand new ones? How long can they last? German cars have Uber technology in them, right? And if you saw a video I made last year, a guy brought me one of those fancy Mercedes, but it had been built in the United States, right? Down south somewhere. The guy paid like 150 grand and it was a rolling pile of junk. The door didn't match, they had to repaint it, they had to re-weld things. His mirror rattled and they said, well, we can't fix it yet because we don't have any new ones that don't rattle. You're gonna have to wait on that. He took it in for service because it had check engine lights. They said, oh, we fixed it all. I put my scan tool on, still got a whole bunch of codes. They didn't fix anything. So they're not that well made anymore. They were a long time ago. In the 60s, they were like miniature tanks that could run forever, but not anymore. They've learned from the Americans build planned obsolescence. And of course the Germans, not only is it planned obsolescence, but it's over-engineered planned obsolescence, which is probably the worst kind you could possibly have. Legend says, why are my driver's floor mat wet? No signs of water other than on the floor. Normally what happens is that your AC drain hole is filled up. When you run your air conditioner, and even in the winter, when you put heat and defrost on it, runs the air conditioner to make the air dry. The condensation has to go somewhere. Now, if you notice in the summer, if you look under your car, when you back up, you'll see a puddle of water. Well, that's all the condensation that drips through the drain holes. The drain holes will clog up eventually with bacteria and mold leaves, whatever, right? It's gotta go somewhere so it overflows and it ends up on the floor. So you're gonna have to change your drain holes out. The only other thing I've ever seen do that if it's on your floor by your foot, sometimes if you've been in a wreck or something's happened, your windshield could leak and water could get in there. Or if you got a sunroof, sometimes the sunroof vents, they have little drain vents in them. If they clog up, then the water won't go down. It'll come through the sunroof and then of course it can go anywhere. It can drip down on your feet, could go anywhere because it's coming from above then. Joe Charlson says, from between Jeep, Bronco, and Tacoma, what would you recommend for long-term, daily, and off-road? Well, you know, it depends on how off-roady you want to get. If you just go on a general off-road, Tacoma would beat them all. Four-wheel drive Tacoma, right? Let's say you're a crazy guy who's going to do rock crawling. I'm not a fan of the late model Jeeps. I'd get an old one, like an old Wrangler, and fix it all up if you wanted to go rock crawling. Those are made more for rock crawling, but how many people actually do giant boulder rock crawling? If you're just going on dirt, mud roads and stuff, the four-wheel drive to Tacoma would be perfectly fine, and it will outlast those other vehicles 10 times as long. And I wouldn't trust a modern Bronco. They've had so many problems. The cheap ones are all made in Mexico, and then the ones that we're making here, the V6 engines were eating valves, so I wouldn't spend that kind of money on a new vehicle that's got all kinds of problems to it. When the Tacomas just keep running and running and running. So I have 3L. What will a bad catalytic converter do to a car? Okay. A lot of times it does nothing other than if your check engine light comes on, you get the code for inefficient catalytic converter. It's telling you it's not working efficiently, but if your temperature gauge doesn't go above normal and it runs fine, hey, you can live with it. Unless you live somewhere where you have to get your car inspected, then you're going to have to fix it. It's going to cost you a small fortune, right? If the catalytic converter actually goes bad, you'll notice your temperature gauge. It'll start running hotter than normal. If it runs halfway, maybe it'll go to three quarters or higher. And eventually, you won't be able to get over a certain speed, like maybe your car will go to 50 miles an hour and not any further. And that's because if the catalytic converter gets totally clogged, up. It's like when we were kids, for a joke, people would get potatoes, they'd stuff them up someone's tailpipe, then the car couldn't go fast. Because if it can't breathe the exhaust out, it can't suck enough air in to go fast, so it won't be able to go fast. In that case, you have to replace the 
the catalytic converter because the engine can't breathe anymore. That's when they're really worn out. Tom Baldwin says the DeLorean increases in value because of the limited supply. Yes, they do to an extent. I guess think some clown out there bought all their old stock stuff and they're building them again or something. Yeah, you got a limited supply. They never made that money. They're actually pretty crappy cars. I mean, say it, Volvo V6 engines and these bizarro French transmissions, I believe. They did windows that wouldn't even open and they made them out of stainless steel so you didn't have to paint them but a lot of stainless steel was so poorly made they didn't put enough nickel in that they all rust and you gotta paint them or you're driving a rusty steel car down the road there was an absolute disaster area of a car but you know how people are they see them in a movie in back to the future and they all want to drive one around so to some extent they're worth money but don't ever overpay for one because there's lots of them for sale nobody wants those things anybody who's ever owned one and driven them if they're serious driver they don't handle that well they're not that fast and for their size and their weight they don't get such hot gas mileage there's really no reason to buy one other than if you're a back to the future fan you want to drive one around make it look like that Enrique 666 says Scotty I'm thinking about buying a Citroen C5 what's your opinion on 1.5 blue HDI diesel engine all right now if you are going to buy one of those and you're in Europe go right ahead <laughs> don't buy one in the United States you won't get any parts and nobody will know how to fix the stupid thing now they've made decent cars for European market for a long time I know guys in England who have guys in France and they seem to love the cars when they wear out they buy another one yeah but don't buy one in the United States because nobody knows how to work on them you can't get parts for them I like those old ones that you start them up they'd raise up in the air with hydraulics and then when you shut them off they'd go back down they were very interesting cars but they failed miserably in the United States because nobody knew how to fix them and they couldn't get parts for them the Gomez Mini Ranch says good day sir my 7.3 power stroke is blowing white smoke added fuel additive still blows white smoke all fluids are good any idea well unfortunately that usually means you're starting to blow a head gasket so watch my video how to tell if your head gasket is Mon Scotty on YouTube get the liquid put it in the tube if it turns from blue to yellow your head gasket's blowing and you're going to spend a fortune rebuilding that diesel engine or you get rid of it as fast as you can because if the head gasket's going you are looking at a ton of money rebuilding a power stroke V8 diesel engine let me tell you dang auto tech says scott you explained about paying to check a pre-owned car how do you charge a diagnostic fee without making your customers upset basically what you could tell them is what i always told people you want me to just do a cursory inspection scan tool and this and i'll spend 15 20 minutes i won't charge anything right but if you want a serious analysis here's what i charge per hour how long do you want me to check out the car you want me to do a compression test what do you want me to do and I explain the whole thing say so, hey you're paying me for my time if you want all these tests done I will gladly do them if you pay me for it but if not I can do a cursory scan look at the data take it for a road test for 10 minutes see how it feels and then warn you that hey you know I didn't do all these other tests so if you want to pay for them here's what it costs and then it's fair on both sides explain honestly to people you know just like I tell people they say these parts are too expensive I can get this for blah blah and I'll say look if you want to go to eBay and buy a part for your car I will install it for the same price I'm going to install the good original equipment part but I'm not going to guarantee anything other than I put it on correctly if the part breaks that's on you but if I buy an OEM part I guarantee the part too because I know it's a good part so you explain things to let people make their own choice well here's one not to get ripped off from got an email from Canada and the guy was ripped off by this online parts company his name's Jason Binnick and he says Scotty I'm in Canada I bought a bearing for my 2010 Mazda 3 from a Canadian parts site called partsavatar.ca a lot of their website is .ca instead of .com and .org right? that's how they do it in Canada my mechanic installed the bearing but it was defective and he had to press it out I approved from my mechanic that it was defective the company doesn't want to help me claiming it's a warranty issue they want me to get a new one which I don't need because I bought a higher quality one elsewhere I had to file a charge back on my credit card from this company complete lack of care let others know not to purchase from this site they're going to treat people like that if somebody sells a defective part they should just immediately refund their money obviously it was one of those cheap Chinese made parts right they'll give you another cheap Chinese part and he of course has to pay the mechanic take it all apart press the old one out press a new one in and he's already 
paid the mechanic to do the job twice and the second time you got higher quality bearing instead of this online it's a problem with online stuff you don't know what you're getting you get in your car you got your car taken apart the guy puts it in, it doesn't work you got to do the job again and you're going to wait for them to send you through the mail another part that's probably going to be defective this is why i tell people deal locally with car parts whenever you can because you deal locally it's there wham you don't have to have any time lag you got a problem places like AutoZone and stuff generally they will refund your money you say this part didn't work it really caused me a problem they'll almost always refund your money and not say oh here's another part then you can go elsewhere and buy a higher quality part if the part you bought wasn't any good at least when you buy them locally get the box look at the box you can see where it's made if it says made in China ask for a better made one you get it online you don't know what you get until it comes I've seen them come and the box will say made in the USA and then you get it out and the parts made in China so it's why you want to buy locally so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell